All right, everybody. Uh, this is Evan Wickham, and uh, you are probably listening to the Park Hill Podcast right now, and that is great. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, I am here with my brand new friend, Larry Steely. Uh, hello, Larry. Hello, Pastor. How are you today? Oh, my goodness. So good. Um, Larry, um, he works with and for an amazing, incredible organization that I've been hearing people celebrate for years, and uh, I'm thrilled to finally be in a place where we are leading a church forward and can partner with uh, Royal Family Kids. I uh, thank you, Larry, um, for all that you do, the wonderful things that are happening. We're going to get into them. This shouldn't be very long at all. Um, uh, but yeah, you were just saying this is an unprecedented time. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the era of coronavirus, I'm sure, you know, all of the COVID stuff intersecting with the, the foster stuff and all of that. I'm sure you have a ton on your heart, a ton Absolutely. you're swimming through right now, but you were just saying that uh, blessed are the f uh, flexible. This is a saying yes. in Royal Family Kids. That is, that is a, a Royal Family Kids saying, um, it is blessed are the flexible for they shall not be broken. And the reason we use that saying so often is the demeanor of foster care children is different than a child who is raised in a loving Christian centered valued home, um, their uncertainty changes moment to moment. So yeah, their behavior yeah. has a tendency to change moment to moment. So we need to be adaptive in how we interact with the children to be more caring and nurturing in that way and showing them what that unconditional love that we grew up receiving looks like. Yeah. Wow. So we're going to get, I just want to ask, I'm going to ask what your organization does specifically, but sure. we're going to get into that. But you're, you are no stranger to quick changes, volatile circumstances, unexpected turns. Yes. This is, this is par for the course for you guys. It is. And even more so now, um, the moniker that we're using recently is called more than ever. Uh, and the reason we're saying more than ever um, if you see the, the studies of, I just lost you for a second. If you see the studies for all of the, all of the isolation, right? So the studies now show that the reports of child abuse for, for investigation are way down. Why is that? Interesting. Because the mandatory reporters, the school teachers, the healthcare workers, the police officers and all of that are not being exposed to them routinely. That doesn't mean that the abuse is not happening. Right. If anything, because of the stress of not being able to work and the stresses of financing and the stresses of having everybody under one roof um, would even multiply without the, the one denominator that changes all of that, which we know and understand is Jesus Christ and right. the hope and the salvation and the peace that he brings us. Um, a lot of these families who, who lack that relationship with the Lord um, are struggling even more so as a result of this. So even right. though the reports are down, doesn't necessarily mean that the abuse is less. It's actually could be even more so now. Right, so right. that's why we've adopted that moniker more than ever for this yeah. year. Yeah. Everybody's locked in homes. Locked in homes. Yeah. Wow. So uh, first question, Larry, uh, what does Royal Family Kids do specifically? I'd love so, to introduce you to our church. Sure. In this way. So Royal Family Kids um, is a unique ministry underneath the church covering that is designed specifically for children in foster care ages 6 to 12. And the reason we've chosen the age group of 6 to 12 um, is because we believe that if we get in the front end of the abuse cycle and we instill some foundational gospel Christ-centered truths into their lives early on, that we can change that trajectory of their lives and break that cycle of abuse that studies have shown to be generational. So how do we do that at Royal Family Kids? We do it in a couple ways. We have a week-long uh, mm -hmm. summer camp. That's uh, five days. The kid, kids arrive Monday morning and they go till Friday afternoon. So and beautiful. then we have the ability to follow that up with a mentor program. 
that, that mirrors the school year. And then now that gives us the ability to really dig in deep because we've had, we, we almost call it, it's like an immersion program, right? We have the kids for five days, 24 hours a day, right? They don't get to go home. It's an overnight camp. They're there for the entire week. So we have relationships that are built and established there. So that's why our mentoring program is such a vital point and, and a part of our program is we're mentoring for that five days, but now we have the ability through being granted by social services about 12 years ago to do the mentoring side as well. So now we have the ability to really just hone in and, and be available to them uh, yeah. in that way. It's yeah. very, been very successful and important for that. Yeah, and that's very concretely. Church, uh, those of you that are listening to this, this is, this is our entry point as a church. We're building up uh, teams and resources and prayer so that we can um, partner with RFK, Royal Family Kids, specifically by putting on a camp. Yes. By putting on a camp. A Park Hill Church just pushed camp where we love, serve, and uh, really lead. Um, these children into uh, an awareness of Jesus. And um, yeah, it, it's powerful, powerful. So I'm looking at your website right now. Uh, it, it says Royal Family Kids currently works in 43 states, 494 countries, uh, counties, as well as six countries. Um, like 10,000 children are being reached annually. <laughs> it's just chill. That's a huge number, right? It's huge when you look at it, um, but when you put it in perspective, the need is so great, right? We, we, I don't know if you've ever heard the starfish story. Um, if you no. ever have the opportunity, Google the starfish story. The lady who wrote it, her name is Lauren. I'm drawing a blank on her last name, um, but that is the epitome of rural family kids. Essentially, it comes down to um, this little boy sitting on the, on the seashore and this guy's walking. And everywhere he looks, he sees starfish everywhere, right? So he sees this little boy tossing them back one by one. And the gentleman looks at the boy and says, what you're doing, you can't change this situation. And the boy looks right at the, the gentleman and picks up one more. He goes, I'm making a difference to this one, sir. And he returns it to the sea. I have heard this powerful. It's powerful, right? But wow. for me, what, what is beautiful about that when we look at it in, it, in its just pureness of it, when that starfish is returned to the sea and it hits the water, it creates a ripple. And what does that ripple touch? It goes out and out and out. That's what one person can do, right? We can reach and do so much, but how much more can we do if we all came together and joined that child on the shore and yeah. started tossing them back by the hundreds? Yeah, so much. Right? Now it's a tidal wave. Mm-hmm. And we have absolutely changed the face of foster care forever by doing so. Yeah. So that's what's important about why we reach 10,000 kids with 15,000 volunteers in 43 states. And the praise report out of that, it's going to be 44 states if they can lift this quarantine and this self-isolation and allow gatherings together as we have for the first year a chapter in Hawaii and Maui that's launching this year. Oh, wow. So that's our 44th state. And that's amazing. we've gone from 221 chapters to 235 chapters. And we're not in six states or six count countries anymore. We're in, a, in 11 counties oh, wow. or 11 countries. So um, Time to update the website. Exciting. Yeah. We, yeah. So we haven't updated officially because they haven't started yet because of all of this, the pandemic that's going on. So we don't want to give out false information, but the hope is there. And yes. we're believing that God has us right where he wants us, poised in a position that we can do some amazing things. So Royal Family Kids, this beautiful organization that, that reaches and empowers children in foster care to see that they're loved by God and provide them a safe space to be mentored. And there's currently approximately 15,000 volunteers serving and um, I know firsthand, I've seen the applications from several people in our own church that are just chomping at the bit to be a part of this move of God. Even through the coronavirus era, there are those that are just waiting on the edge of their seat till they can get back into this. Um, so great question on your website. How is Royal Family Kids introduced 
to foster children, that kids that are in foster care? How, how, does, how does that part of it work? So one of the, each chapter um, has a position on their staff. It's called the child placement coordinator. And that position is the direct liaison between the leadership of rural family kids and the leadership in social services. So they make those connections um, at the national office. We can help for new chapters like yourself to make that introduction and build off of that. But we'll make that introduction, um, send some interest letters out, go to some of the, um, a, a couple organizations that are out there, it's called Faith in Motion. It's a direct um, partnership between the local church and social services. So that's a great opportunity to meet a ton of social workers, talk about rural family, get the word out, and then say, hey, if you have children on your caseload, they're ages 6 to 12, that you think would benefit from this week at camp and this mentoring opportunity, here's my card, here's an application, get it to the foster families. There is zero charge to social yeah. services. There is zero charge. Yeah to the foster families, but it's an opportunity. It does a couple of things. It's an opportunity to allow the children to grow in a safe and loving environment, but it also grants a little bit of respite for the foster families, which is sure. so vitally needed in this time. Yeah. 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 I remember uh, I was a worship pastor at, in a church in Portland called West side, uh, West side of Jesus church. And they're just huge into Royal family kids. They've been um, putting on, camps as a chapter for for years i just remember the buses loading up i was i i never was able to actually be part of a of one of the camps but i remember when they'd come back just staff members and volunteers from within the church just weeping, weeping. Uh, that they got to be a part of just yeah. weep like every i <laughs> i don't know if this well, is how every camp works i don't know if that if this is how every camp works but um this specific one they planned every day to be a birthday party. <laughs> yeah. That's Every day awesome. of camp was a birthday party yeah. for a chunk of the camp. And ev by the end of camp, everyone got yeah. presents. I don't, know, I don't know how it normally works, but it's just creative love just pouring out on these, these children. So the birthday party is actually part of the programming for Royal Family. And how that started is our former vice president in charge of camps and mentors. Um, he started as a chapter director. 25 years ago and he his birthday was celebrated over camp so the first year he was a director it was on his birthday he was a little mopey you know oh, yeah. one of the campers said director glenn what what's wrong he said well it's my birthday he's like oh happy birthday and he's like well i never had a birthday the little boy said, well, i've never had a birthday gosh and it was that moment that glenn left the camp went to Walmart, bought presents for every one of the boys and girls, balloons, bought a cake. They came back and they did a birthday party. Come on. And out of that, that moment of him looking, and, and I use the analogy of the eye chair, sitting in the eye chair, right? Everything's about me at this moment. And this kid just shattered him. And he said, all right, I get it, God. This is, you want me to be different. And this is how we're going to be different. And that moment, for Royal Family as a whole changed because it birthed the birthday party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, I mean, it just sounds right? like, it sounds like just Jesus using children as object lessons in right. front of a bunch of gawking disciples who don't understand right. the importance of children in the middle of the action, you know? Exactly. Exactly. It's, what the enemy meant for destruction, God turned to the good. Yeah. It's awesome. So there's a question here on your, um, on your website. How do you know this program is making a difference. Um, just, I don't know how you would answer that. There's an answer here, but I just love to hear it from you, Larry, whether it's stories um, or you know metrics. What? That, or... It, it's, a, it's a great question, right? So when you look at, um, when you look at large corporate organizations and you, you ask for funding and they say, okay, well, how do you know that your program's a success? Show me data, right? Well, the data we have is every child at the end of camp, they get two letters to write. One's a dear God letter, and one is what I loved about Royal Family Kids. Mm -hmm. And when you read them at the end of camp, and you're like, what I love about Royal Family Kids, I love that everyone was nice to me. I love that I got 
a safe place to go to sleep. I love that I got three meals. I love that we played games. I love that when I learned how to ride a bike or I learned how to swim, right? And then once they graduate out and they turn 18, now they're coming back to volunteer. Mm -hmm. So if you want to know how you know that your program is a success is when the kids come back to serve because they know the value of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I, I, I just hope that everyone who's listening, um, Park Hill Church family and beyond, um, that the least, the least you do is go on rfk.org and spend some time while you're in quarantine. Uh, let's be honest, you have time and um, spend some time looking through Royal Family Kids, um, their about section, what they do, um, locations. Park Hill Church is doing everything we can to work toward becoming a Royal Family Kids chapter. Just the same language Larry used, becoming one of the 250 plus chapters where we are, um, Lord willing, by 2021, Lord willing, uh, operating, uh, running, that's one of my kids screaming, um, r- running one of, our, one of these camps annually. Um, and calling the whole church to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the lives of those who are poor, powerless, and the most vulnerable people, especially in, in, in the era of coronavirus. I don't think we stop and really compute how vulnerable um, kids in foster care actually are in this time. Um, yeah, there's a guy in our church who runs an organization called Steps of Justice, where he reaches you know, the refugee contingencies in San Diego and a lot of, there's just so much, a lot of domestic violence that's happening in those, uh, a lot of those, a lot of the great, great, great homes, but, but homes they're not normally locked down in, in these right. very urban areas and concentrated and dense without school, without mentors. Um, and Jesus is calling our church into this space right now. He's calling us into this space. And, it. um, Larry, I don't know if there's one more thing you would say uh, when you speak to churches, when you speak to a, 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 a blooming chapter, um, is there's one thing you could leave us with right now. Uh, I think you hit it on the head um, when, you, when you said that your church is, is called to do this, right? Uh, if you look at scripture in James 127, uh, it's very specific, right? We are to care for the widows and orphans in their time of distress. That's a mandate. That's not if there's time or if there's resources or, or maybe this day, yeah. but not this day. It's we, we shall. Yeah, that's James' definition of true worship, James right. 127. True. True like so, practice of Christianity. Right. So if we are the church, right, and we are to come around together in unity and love on these kids, um, it's a powerful thing. Uh, the one thing I want to leave you with, though, is as we are all in self-isolation, right? And we are so uncertain about tomorrow. I want you to think about it. And this, this it brings me to tears when I talk about it all the time. This is the life of a child in foster care every day. What we've experienced for the last four weeks, the uncertainty, this is their every day. They don't know if, they're, if they haven't been removed from a home wow. yet. Wow. They don't know if they're going to have food tomorrow. They don't know if they're going to have food today. They don't know if mom or dad or whoever is going to abuse them. And if they are in a, in a foster home and it's a great home, then things are great. If it's not such a good home, then that tension is, okay, is a social worker coming to remove me? Have I been bad enough that they're going to want me to go somewhere else? So that uncertainty that we're going through now as individuals with this pandemic that's going on, I think that's, that's very important for Park Hills and for all of us to think about is that's their every day. That's the, the every day these children go through. My so it's, it's a challenging time. So now for these kids, how much more are they affected as a result of this? So we all can do something. I believe that Park Hills Church, um, when the time I got to spend with um, – with your team when we did the camp visit last year with my wife and I, it was phenomenal. Um, the energy uh, with Ariel is amazing. She's an incredible young lady. I'm excited to see how that's going to just blossom and grow. Um, yeah, she's amazing. And one thing I'll recommend too is go to YouTube as well. Once you're done visiting the website, go to YouTube, type in Royal Family Kids, 
that some of the chapters post um, uh, video collages of their camp week or little mm -hmm. videos and stuff, birthday party stuff, or even go to Vimo and, and check out some of the Rural Family Kids channel and see what's out there. There's some great videos out there. We'll um, do. Yeah, but the Samantha story, the Samantha story is the one to watch to start if you want to get the heart of what Royal Family Kids will do um, through her story and her life. YouTube, Samantha story, Royal Family Kids. I'll put all that in the uh, in the show notes in the podcast and as well as the YouTube description for this for this video conversation. Larry, thank you, not just for this time you've given to our church today, but for what you're doing for uh, the least of these all thank over. You, yeah, all over the country. And you specifically focus on Pacific uh, Coast operations, correct? Correct. Yes. My yeah. wife and I are, res are the Pacific region uh, directors. So uh, we're responsible for California, Nevada, and Hawaii. Okay. So we have to suffer every now and then and go to Hawaii. And Yeah, bummer. You know, yeah. Cool. Well, Larry, you're amazing. I'm going to stop recording um, and then we can say goodbye afterwards. But um, uh, from Park Hill Church to Royal Family Kids, thank you for en enabling us and really giving us concrete path. Most churches, the idea of serving in this way is great, uh, but to lay down the tracks for churches like you, you guys are doing is a great work. And we're more than happy to send time, talent, and treasure down those tracks for the sake of the least of these. Yeah. Thank you. Pastor. So, uh, yeah. Thanks, Larry. Have a wonderful day. And Park Hill Church, uh, thanks for listening uh, to the midweek content. Look up Royal Family Kids and may the grace of our Lord be with you. God bless.